And it is Tuesday here in Kansas. I guess it's Tuesday everywhere. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Anyway, we got hot tea, we got some die cast, we got tape and stuff that needs two toned up. So we're going to do that here shortly. We're going to let uh, YouTube do its thing. I've been doing lives on Instagram and Facebook, just teaching things, letting you guys learn. If you don't have any skills, at least um, you can learn them. And if you already have them, you can see how maybe somebody does it differently. So that's the point of this. Anyhow, I'm going to have another swill of tea and then uh, we'll get her cranking. What are we doing? Glad you asked. Here we go. We've got this truck right here. This is a T DCP T800 164 scale hood. This is going to be silver where you can see the primer and then on the side of the hood where it's blue. The fenders have to stay blue. The rest of it's going to be silver. Hey, there's Vaughn. Good to see you, Vaughn. Then we've got this 9400 International. This is also diecast promotions. This 9400 has black fenders and the rest of it's IH red. There we go. So that's what we're going to do. Um, what are we using for tape? Um, I forget what brand this is. Uh, let me see. I think this is a 3M product, 8th inch or 3 16 or whatever the heck size this is. This is uh, vinyl tape. Going to use this. Hi, Mass Big Rigs. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in, stopping in. Uh, so this is a vinyl tape. I'm going to use this on the International, and you'll see why when I get to that. And then I've got some other automotive paint. Hello, Logan. Good to see you. This is also another 3M product. I uh, bought this. Well, I'll get to that in a second. This is a quarter-inch masking tape for... It, it, this is automotive-grade masking tape. What makes it automotive-grade? I don't know. But this and this, these three products... Or no, these two are Scott's. This is Scott. So these three products here, when I bought these new a couple years ago at Napa, right here in Dodge City, Kansas, were 55 bucks in change. Why do I remember that? Because I almost crapped myself when I paid for this because I'm like, it's masking tape. I was thinking, you know, 20 bucks on a good day. And then he says, $50. And I'm like, ow, man, guys, some food would have been dandy. Um... Anyway, but it is what it is. This stuff is excellent, excellent tape. Doesn't bring up your paint, so that is a good reason to use it. Now, a little caveat here. Right, here's another product I use a lot. This is frog tape. I bought this at Home Depot. And you know what frog tape is. Just go to the painting aisle, buy frog tape. I use this a lot. <laughs> Look at that, Logan. <laughs> You're masking too. Sweet. Well, yeah, since you already know what you're doing, you can give me some tips as we get into this. So I'm using all three or all four products. Tonight I'm basically using these two, and then I'll come back with a little bit of one of these two to, and you'll see that as we get into it. Okay, so we're going to start with the T800. Both of these got to get painted. Um, you know, depending on how well this goes, we may end up just shooting some paint on this tonight too. Uh, here we go. All right. Do not be afraid to ask any questions as we're going along. Um, that's what I'm here for. I want everyone to learn how to do this so you can do your own kick butt die cast. By golly, I'm over here grabbing a couple tools off of my shelf. I'll be back to you in just a second or out of my, my tool space. Basically keeping, um, just a couple of products here. I need a small scissor. I got this out of like, uh, uh, a grooming kit, you know, something you keep in your bathroom. A lot of people have you know, like a toenail clipper and, and a scissor like this in there. That's where that came from, I, I think. I'm pretty sure. I know I stole it. I didn't pay for it. So it came out of my house from somebody, and now it's in the lab forever. <coughs> Still coming down off of a cold, although I say that. It's basically over. Just a little bit of the hangover from my cold. Um, okay. So I've cut me a, a strip about two inches long or so. I'm going to start at the back, work toward the front. And I said this in my live last night when I was on YouTube or on Facebook or Instagram. I don't remember which one I was on. But whenever you're going to do a two-tone, this is a gospel according to Eric. I stand by this rule. Paint your fenders first. Get these fenders so you can mask these, okay? Do not try to mask the side of the hood. You Well, you can... I find it extraordinarily difficult to get nice, crisp, clean lines masking the side of the hood. So I always mask the fenders first. So that is my gospel rule. 
That is the gospel according to Eric. All right, can I get an amen, brothers? Yeah, preach it. So there we have one side done, and we will do the bottom. We're, not, we're just not getting there yet. We're going to do that in a second. I do the tops first, then I flip it over to the bottom. Eric, do you prime this again after you've shot color on the fenders because I've got some blue paint over the hood? Normally, no. No, I don't. Unless it's a really obnoxious color, like it's a dark color and I'm putting some white over a dark color, then I'd prime it uh, just so the darkness doesn't change the color of the paint. Okay. I'm using a Q-tip to go over this like so. Boom, boom. And I'm going to push this down in that. Whoa, now you can see looky there. That's the hardest part about doing live is always remembering you guys can't see it as well as I can. So I'm just using a Q-tip here. Okay. If you want, come in with a knife if you want. Use the flat side so you don't scuff your paint. And then you can even kind of just gently, don't, don't, don't get carried away here, right? You don't have to get carried away. We don't want to scratch anything. I'm just going to kind of push that, push that down a little bit. No worries. Don't get carried away. Don't get crazy. Just kind of give them a little squeeze. That's all. Just making sure that tape's nice and adhered against that, that nice, crisp, clean edge, because that's what we want. Now, I take my excess and I fold it underneath the fender, just like so. Now, I don't, I myself, do not get too worried about overspray and stuff on the underside. Okay, for my clients and the people I'm serving, this is going to set on a shelf. They're never going to see it. So I do a good job, but I don't freak out if it's not perfect, okay? Because, uh, you know, it's die cast. Why are we freaking out over die cast? That's not smart. Okay, so here you can see right there. We got it. Okay. I'm going to grab just another quick short piece of this thin tape. <clears throat> and I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna go right here along this inside edge just to make it dandy and happy. Is that does that look happy to you? I think it's happy. It looks like a smile. Ha. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. Okay. Now we're gonna grab the frog tape because it's so darn economical. Right there. Frog tape. Bought it at Home Depot in Garden City, 55 miles to the west of me. Because we were over there and I'm like, I need to spend money on something. Oh, look, there's frog tape. I use a scissors. I don't cut it. Why, why, I don't tear it. I don't know why. I just do. It's, 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 it's how I roll. So now I'm not being too careful with the frog tape. You know, it's all good. All I want to do is make sure I don't get any overspray on the outside of that blue fender over here. See, I want to make sure this is covered. And I use the frog tape because, like I said a minute ago, it's so economical. You spent five bucks or six or eight bucks on a roll. Who cares if you waste two inches of it, right? Okay, and then we're just about done here. Now, one thing I am going to teach, I'm not going to do it myself, so call me a hypocrite tonight, uh, and, and I'll explain why I'm a total hypocrite on this one point I'm about to explain. Now, what I like to do, if I got a complicated tape job, and this is not a complicated tape job, this is, a, this is an easy win. If you were looking for a good place to start, do this. But if I were painting down the side of a sleeper where I had lots of rivets and door frames and stuff like that to, to seal around, after I was done taping, I would come back with the color, my base color, which is sovereign blue, and I would paint over this tape and seal the tape. Okay? In those circumstances, I definitely would seal it with the base color. But since I've got a nice, crisp, flat edge with no other obstructions or anything to bother that, 
I'm just going to make sure I've got a good seal, which you saw me do, and then I'm gonna shoot color over the tape. I'm not gonna do the base color, I'm gonna do the two-tone, the second color. On this one, that's what I'm gonna do, and I'll do that on this International as well. Again, and you'll see why. We have a nice, crisp, flat edge right there, okay? Wow, hard to see, sorry about that. Let's do this again. You have a nice, crisp, flat edge right in here. We can tape that all day long and have really, really good results. For this one, I'm not gonna use the uh, Scott tape. Um, it's a little wide for what I wanna do here. And I'm not sure how, I've never actually done a two-tone international before. This is my first one. And for this one, I'm just gonna use this vinyl tape here. It's a little thinner, easy to manage. We'll come back with some other tape here in a minute. Okay, now I'm just gonna start up here at the front because I got a lot of real estate to move around. And we're just going to push that up into there. Now you might be saying, hey Eric, you make that look so simple. Well, I've done it a couple times, guys. This ain't my first rodeo. And I would tell you for every victory I've had, you can expect there's been a few faux pas that you didn't get to see. Okay, just like so. Now the front of this, I've got a headlight uh, right here and we're just going to go ahead and wrap that around, push that in and underneath. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Well, we'll do that at the end when we can flip it over. And another thing, Eric, that seems like that was so effortless. Well, it's a nice flat surface. You're just following a body, body line. That's why if you're wanting to do a two-tone, I could say, man, I sure would like to do a two-tone something. Well, this is a perfect way to start because you have nice, easy lines to follow. So if you were looking for a two-tone project to begin with, um, this is a good one. This would be a good one to go. Um, you can do this exact process on IH, Diecast Promotions Internationals, like the 94, 91, 92 series, 91, 92, 9400. Those would all be good ones to start with. Your T800 Kenworth, W900 Kenworth, um, even a T880 offers a really nice clean line to tape against, or T680 uh, DCP. All the Peterbilt fenders come off, uh, so those aren't really a big deal. Um, you could even do, I think I have, I think, um, I think it would be a little more challenging but um, even an IH Pro Star, you could uh, give a go. I don't think that'd be my first candidate for a practice on taping and masking fenders. Definitely the uh, DCP T800. Man, that one's just a slam dunk. That's a good one to practice on. Nice and flat, easy lines. Good to go. Okay, let's just go ahead and wrap that around. Give us a straight line there. Do, 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 Okay. Happiness. All right. Now, can we make this work? Let's try the frog tape. I don't know if this is going to work or not, guys. We'll give it to ladies. Guys, ladies, whoever's watching. And I will go back and look for comments in just a moment. So if you're saying, hey, Eric, talk to me. I will, just give me a minute. Okay, happiness, man, totally happy. Okay, now flip it over. 
And then we'll just begin folding this on itself like so. Ta-da! Wow. Okay, neither of these uh, two trucks will I do the whole seal and the painting and sealing thing like I had mentioned prior. Um, I need to do just another really complicated tutorial on just that. I've done them before, but I haven't done one live in a long time. Okay, we are ready to shoot paint. If you guys are wanting to, let's shoot some paint. I'm going to go back and look for comments real quick. Um, here we go. All right. Mass Big Rigs. I'm painting right now as well. Good. Vaughn has got one. Uh, one more color to do on a two-tone, but waiting for the paint to dry. Excellent, excellent. Um, Christopher says, cool, and Bishop says, hello, and hello, and welcome to all of you. All right. Okay, a little hit of tea here. Why am I drinking hot tea? I don't know. My wife buys tea, and it's like it just sits in my house, and I'm like, someone's got to drink it. I guess I will. Now we're going to go to the painting area. So if you're not using a um, airbrush, guess what? I will give you a tutorial on airbrushing. So last night I did some airbrush tutorials. And actually, I need to get these out of the road. Those are in the way now. And when you go grab paint, silver, where's the red? Ah. Okay, a lot of guys, they have trouble with painting. I get comments, or I see comments on Facebook and stuff like this. Eric, I just can't paint. It's a nightmare. I do a terrible job. And I'm like, well, there's a, there's a way around that. And I'm telling you, I have screwed up so much paint in my lifetime. In my tenure as a die-cast painting fellow, it's not even funny. Well, here's the secret sauce, the gospel according to Eric, chapter 6, verse 2. <coughs> Use good paint. Now, I have some caveats to that, but I'm going to basically summarize my thoughts on paint. And if you want the whole Monty, uh, go subscribe to my newsletter, and I will give you uh, my full-blown tutorial on paint. Uh, anyway, long story short... Uh, whenever I have pro troubles with paint, 99% of the time it's because I was using cheap paint. Now, this would be something you'd buy at a discount store or a hardware store for like five or six or seven bucks a can. I rarely ever have trouble with really good paint. Now, this is automotive grade paint. Both of these are. I've used aerosol brand, you know, this same color in aerosols before. Nary a problem. Um, but I'm here to tell you, as soon as I go for the uh, less expensive brand, which I still use, by the way, I still use discount brands um, because there's some projects, you know, you just don't need to break out the airbrush or use an expensive paint. So I still use the cheap brands. I just don't use them very often, especially not on client trucks where uh, I would be ticked off if I ruined the paint at clear coat. Okay, so there's my quickie on paint. Okay, so right now I'm assembling my airbrush because I'm kind of a Nazi when I clean this thing. I take off this part and then, oh wow, you can't see crap. Um, let's do this, now you can see. Um, yeah, I'm a Nazi when I take off, uh, I take these things apart and I just throw them in my lacquer thinner which I use to clean the brush. And it just seems like I don't have any funk and junk and crap get in there that ticks me off and makes a mess. Okay, so this is this was mixed by um, uh, r and &E Paint in Arkansas. I buy a lot of my paint from them because uh, I email them a paint code. P3010EB Silver is what we're using here tonight. There's the paint code and the color. And... Um, you know, they send me an invoice via PayPal, and in four days I've got paint, and I never have to leave my house. And these are automotive-grade touch-up bottles that are matched to the bin of semis. And I 
forgot something that I need to grab real quick. Where's the other part? Oh no! Where'd you go? Where's my silver pieces? I uh, need that sleeper. And While I was sitting there, John, with you shaking that silver, I'm like, Eric, you're about to make a mistake and not paint the other parts of that cab silver. I think this is, is this Shelby's truck? I don't remember whose this is. I think it's Shelby. Anyway, so these get painted silver. Okay, so a lot of times what I do when I'm using uh, my paint, so after I shake it, I just use a paper Dixie cup because the paint won't eat through it. And this is what's insane about using an airbrush. So you have to thin this. This won't go, th well, I mean, it might go through the brush. I don't know. So what I do here is I just, let's see. Can I do this and have you guys watch? Let's try this. Oh, wow, this is going to be a fail. Um, ooh, that's a lot. Holy smokes. So basically, I have covered just up to about here in my cup. So, look at that. There is so much paint left in there. Oh my gosh, so much paint. You, how many trucks, how many 164 scale trucks could you paint with this little touch-up bottle? I can tell you, you can paint a carapa ton of trucks. Carapa. Uh, matter of fact, this is one of my favorite colors in the whole wide world that I bought for myself and I painted eight trucks and I still have at least a third of that left. I painted, was it six or eight? I know I painted uh, uh, even numbers of uh, T600s and T8, T660s. I thin my um, paint with good old fashioned automotive primer or uh, thinner, paint thinner. So this is the brand I'm using right here. Bought it at Napa Auto Parts in Dodge City, Kansas. Now in the good old days, when I was first getting started, I would actually use a syringe like this and I would measure up like 30 cc's of paint and then equal amounts of thinner. Well, okay, I got lazy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm lazy. Now I just eyeball it. Now we're gonna sit here and mix this up. Mixy, mixy, mix. And I'm using an old screwdriver here. I'm using an Iwata Revolution airbrush, if you're wondering. I bought that in 2018. I actually didn't start using it until 2019 because I bought it thinking I wasn't going to like it. And really what I had is some money. Rock and H had some money I had to spend. Why well, didn't have to spend? I just thought, you know, let's remove that from what we're going to be taxed on. So I went out and bought an airbrush for, oh, and some other accessories for 160 I think the brush itself is only 99 uh, But I've really come to like this uh, just a lot, lot, lot. Okay, after I've mixed it a little while, pour it in the cup and their gravity feed. Okay, we need to go get things. What do we need to grab? We need to go in the case cabinet, grab a respirator. When I was younger, well, it wasn't too long ago, I thought, I'm bulletproof, I don't need to do that. Well, I don't feel bulletproof anymore. Yeah, and I do wear rubber gloves. Why do I wear rubber gloves? Because I hate getting paint on my fingers and then having to clean it off. And again, I guess I'm, I don't know if I'm getting smarter as I age or what, but I'm like, all those chemicals on your skin really can't be good. So let's not get them on your skin or inhale them. Okay, now I need to put you in a viewing position for paint. Okay, we're gonna s look at this. I gotta repair my heater. <sighs> my regulator puked. I gotta fix that before it gets cold. All right. Ah, now you can see. Yay! Okay, let's do this. Now, 
This is just a box, as you can see. A couple of hinges from the dollar store and some clear plastic. Nothing fancy, right? And then I've got a bathroom fart fan in there uh, to exhaust out the fumes which go outside. That's it. That's my exhaust system. Okay, one other thing. If you happen to buy an Iowa Revolution, here's how this works. This is variable spray. So, um, first, uh, let's, let's just do this here. I'll just show you. If you push this button down right here, and just push it straight down, all you get is compressed air. So let's say your workspace has got dirt and dust in it. You can blow off the piece and make sure that there's no dirt and dust get on the piece. Just like so. Now you don't have to do that, but you can do it. But that will just help dirt and funk stay out of it. Next, um, again, I said this is a variable application piece, so you can push it down, you get compressed air. If you push it down and go back, the farther back you push or pull, the more paint comes out of the gun. So let's say you got a really tiny uh, area you want to spray. If you go about midway through, you're getting half the volume of paint out, and then if you go all the way back and down, it's the full volume of paint that this thing will run. Okay, there's, there's your quickie on that. Okay, time to respirator up. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Okay, so there we go. Um, this one is painted. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come back on this hood especially. And let me see here. I'm coming around this side. Here you go. Whoa, there you are. You can kind of see some blue still poking through there. Now, we would have solved this immediately had I primed this, but I'm really not concerned about it because I'm going to do another coat over this. Boom, it's gone. No worries. Um, but when in doubt, when in doubt, if you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm afraid. Well, if you're afraid, then just shoot some primer over that and you're done. There's no reason to be afraid. I wasn't afraid, so I just shot color and then I'll do color once more. But I'm going to do that after this has had just a wee bit of time to get happy and dry. Now, it's pretty cool here in the shop, so this isn't going to dry real fast. Um, let's just go take a look at the time and temperature. 57. So this will take a little bit of time to dry. Now, how can we speed that up? I'm glad you asked. Here's a way. Um, we are going to go plug in our little space heater here. Stick that on high. And then, watch this. Now, we're not going to put it right in... Whoa, now you can watch it. Now you can actually see it. Um, I'm going to stick this over here. I don't know if you heard me swear, because I almost lost my marbles when uh, that stupid cab almost came off of that. Golly, I don't need that. Okay, so we're just going to put that in front of the heat. Look at that. Bum. They're done. 
Uh, I'm putting this one, this piece, farther away from the heat because I don't want that tape to get all hot and sticky and then muck up my paint. That would tick me off a whole lot, lot, lot. So to avoid that, look at there. We just put it farther away. Done, 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 done. Okay. Uh, one other thing I'm going to show you here. No. Okay, so this is the paint we mixed up. Look at that. Way too much paint. We could paint like 22 more trucks. That's an exaggeration, of course. But we only used half of the cup here, and that was to do the cab, the sleeper, and the hood. So we got half of that paint left. I don't know about you guys. I just think it's cool the way it just churns in the cup. That's just kind of cool. I just think that's neat. Anyway, um, yeah, look at that. Just sits there and churns. That's so awesome. What do you do with this leftover paint? Well, this is what I shot last night, and it just kind of thin or gets thick and turns to goo. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. Holy smokes. This is what we shot last night. That's Sovereign Blue. This is uh, International Truck Red. And it's just going to sit there and get dry. I end up uh, throwing it away uh, in our big trash can outside. I won't leave it in the shop because I don't want it to, you know, nobody smokes in here, but why have that chemical in here? Okay. So there you go. That is tape Whoop. right there. Oh, and a big blue glove. That is tape and masking. So if you got questions, now is a great time to ask. And if you want more of this kind of stuff, go to diecastlab.com. That's my membership site where all of my videos live. So these lives are nice, but they're probably not as complete as some of the tutorials I have over there. That and they're all in series. Uh, Bishop says, thanks for the help on the video. You are welcome. I am glad to help. That's what I'm here for. Uh, so yeah, diecastlab.com. That's my membership site where you can support everything that happens at Rock and H, and I'm grateful that you do. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the end of what we wanted to do tonight. I'm not going to waste your time having you wait on paint dry, although really, we could probably shoot more paint right now, because that's already touched dry. So this is something we just shot like not more than a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, it's already touched dry. We can actually put another coat on that. You want to do that? Let's do that. I, I want to do that. And then I'm going to clean up my, I can show you how to clean the airbrush or how I clean my airbrush. Maybe not how everyone else does it, but how I do it. Okay. And then I gotta shoot some red. And actually I can shoot clear coat too, because I gotta clear coat that and those. That happened last night. My part fell out of the helping hands. Oh, golly, that ticks me off. And then, luckily, luckily, the paint's not wet. 
and nothing stuck to it, and there's no nicks in the paint. This never happens. Okay, that's why doing this kind of stuff live is dangerous work. Because then you make them little screw-ups where something doesn't go right and everyone gets to watch. How fun. Anyway, um, yeah. So, um, right, that happened last night where I dropped a, a part come out of the helping hands just like it did right there. It went in there and then it was full of gunk and I had to start over. Anyway, bleh. Okay, let's go clean. Okay, here we are. You can see. I can see. Everyone can see. That's good. So I just poured the rest of the leftover paint inside my cup again. We used way, way, way too much. But, I mean, I've got plenty to, to give. And so what I've been doing here now is like this cup, this color right here, I'm going to send with the owner of this truck. For a while, I was actually keeping all that paint, thinking, oh, I'm going to use this on other projects. Well, when you're doing custom trucks like I do, um, where it's one of one, you're not reusing that paint because, you know, not everyone has the same paint codes. I've used, like, Viper Red over a couple of times and Electric Blue a few times, but that's it. The rest of it has all been one color here and one color there. What am I doing now? Okay, I'm cleaning my cup out, and I've got lacquer thinner in this syringe right here. No, this is not meth or heroin or anything else. No, but just, just good old-fashioned lacquer thinner in a, in, a, in a syringe where so I can kind of dole it out easy. And it just kind of works for me, so I keep using it, you know, or doing it this way. Wipe off the side from the... Last night I didn't wipe that off. I like a clean airbrush and I didn't clean it proper. Anyway, um, getting a little carried away here. So what I do normally is I fill it up with lacquer thinner. I kind of get the worst of the paint out with a rag and then that just seems like I don't use as much lacquer thinner, not that that's a big problem. Then I go ahead and pull the needle and make sure there's nothing coming up the side. Wow. Got a lot of leftover paint from last night on there. Well, that's strange. Huh. I know I cleaned it better than that. That's weird. Anyway. Then I run a little paint down the body. Little paint, little lacquer thinner down the body. Just to clean any silver that might have back flowed back through the knee past the needle. And then I rinse it out again. And we're ready to go for another color. So it's not as quick as using aerosols, but this works for me, and so I keep doing it. Okay, so what will we do next? Well, surely we got time to paint some red. Oh, I think we do. Let's do that. Now, what I really like to do, and I, I know most of you guys, it's likely most of you aren't doing as many projects as I'm doing at one time, like last night, if I'd have been really on my game, I'd have had this shade of red to shoot this IH Pro Star back here and Shelby's truck. 
So I could have done them both at the same time. Well, that didn't work. And it was dumb luck that I can use this shade of red on Shelby's and um, the other guy, I forget his name, Jason, Jason is it? J I don't remember, anyway. On his truck, um, his particular paint coat I couldn't pull for some dumb reason. I couldn't get the, uh, well, I got an international four letter VIN, four number VIN, and that, that's a disaster. I think it's a sickens color, and those are hard for me to match out here in the sticks. That one's difficult. DuPont paint code's no big deal, but sickens, yep, that's pain. There, maybe we won't thin this one quite as much as we did last night. I got a little carried away with the thinner. Okay. And I keep lots of rags around. I go through rags like crazy. Yep, that's definitely a little thicker than last night. And I didn't mix up near as much. Cool. All right. Now, for Shelby's truck, we need to take a ride. And grab this part right here. Because this, this goes on, a, on an IH uh, 9400. And then I don't recall if her bumper's black or what color. But if it's black, I'll just shoot some aerosol over it. See, perfect place for cheap paint. Okay, so we need helping hands. So there we go, helping hands. And whoop, there we go. Do, 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 do. And here you are. And boop, boop. 42 minutes. Holy smokes. We've done a lot of work. Okay. Respirator. And there we go. Um, this cab, these IH cabs are just kind of brutal to, they want to fall out of here. There we go. Another coat on this one. Uh, I'm going to just let that chill. So since we've all been here together for so long, now, if you've been in on this live since we started, get that box out of the room. Okay. So if you've been in on this live since we started, um, we mask this piece. We mask it, we put two coats of paint on it. And now, let's go ahead and take the tape off. Eric, can you really do that that quickly? Sure, 
Why not? Now, we're not going to be all manly and just tear into it. We're going to be uh, gentle. We'll be in touch with our feminine side here and be just careful. We're not even going to be in touch with our... We're just going to be dadgum careful like we should be with a project we just spent time giving, giving our time to. Okay, well, doesn't want to come off easy, does it? There we go. <laughs> Sticking goofy thing. Ta da! Check it out, fellas, right there. Here, let's get you in some better light so you can see it. There we go. Now you can see it proper. Look at that. Too cool. And even underneath. That looks freaking cool. Love. All right. Let's do the other side. That's what, you know, if, if you've been watching all along, you've heard me say this already, but I'm going to say it again for anyone that's just joined us. Um, if you're looking for a project to get started with and you want to practice two tones, Kenworth T800 by Diecast Promotions is a great place to get going because you have nice flat lines you can start with. And you, if you watch, I mean, go back and watch this whole thing. I mean, it, I didn't do anything. It's not rocket science. Look at that. Oh, woohoo! That is so pretty. Dang, I could put decals on that tonight if I want to. And let me see, which decal? This one right here. So these decals actually go on this truck right here. Uh, these go down the sleeper. No, this is the hood. Number 98 for the hood. No, 23 for the hood number. Those swirls down the hood, uh, DOT numbers, and then door decal. And we have passenger side and driver side. Woohoo! I could totally stick this tonight. I could be clear coating. What time is it, 7.54? Dang. Dang! Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I wonder if the international is going to turn out that's good. How long do you guys want to go? It's been 47 minutes. Holy crap. Let's shoot some red on this quick. See if we can get that paint break down and then we'll pull the tape on that one. Dad, come on. Okay, we will go put our respirator away. And then we're gonna take these two and we're gonna stick them in front of the heat. Okay, we're gonna cook that one right there. Normally my heater's sitting on this table, but as you can tell, my had my chair on it so I could put the tripod there so you guys could watch. Okay, and we'll just let that kind of be away from the heat. We'll get that where it won't fall. 
And then we're gonna clean our cup. We'll get this put away for the night. Okay. Again, if you're just starting here, I'm pouring the leftover paint from my cup in there. I got a jar full of um, lacquer thinner in my syringe. So, see, thinner. This is just good old lacquer thinner from Walmart. 16 bucks a gallon. And then this is just a shop rag. Just kind of cleaning the worst of the cup out. I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to do it, but this is the way I do it. So what the heck, right? And we'll do that again. I think I'm about ready to retire my rag. Okay. Okay, now we'll pull this apart. Okay, clean our needle off. Then I like to take my stuff apart here. And I just put that in my lacquer thinner that I used to clean the brush. You can tell that lacquer thinner is not perfectly clean, but that's all right. For what I'm doing, I'm not using it for paint. I'm just using it for cleaning, so I don't think it doesn't seem to affect anything. So that's what I do. And then this tiny little, well, you can't see it, but this tiny little guy right here. I was, it seemed like I had replaced a couple of these. And they're expensive for what they are. Uh, so I started just putting that in there and just letting it chill out until I use it again. And it seems like I haven't replaced one in a year. It seemed like I went through a couple of them in rapid fire succession. And I'm like, ooh, there's got to be a better way to get a little more life out of those dudes. So again, that's just lacquer thinner. Then I pull this part out here. This is just a, it's got a little paint on it. There. And then I just run thinner through the body of my brush and then just rinse it out. And then finally, I take one of these little brushes here and I run it down the guts. And you get a set of these brushes um, with with your new brush if you buy one. That wasn't very good. Let's do it again. Use a little heavier one. So, yeah. And then I bought another set at Harbor Freight here locally. Okay. I'm going to a little quick wipe down, and that's going to be that. And there we go for brush. Done. Okay, all of this paint here, these are leftover cups. I'm going to go, when I leave tonight, I'm going to take these with me and discard them outside so I don't burn my shop down by accident. Because, well, that would just, that would not make me happy. Or we could mix this all together and shoot it and see what we'd make. Nah. And we'll get rid of that rag while we're here. Okay, that's that. Now, what we can do if we want to do it, pull tape on this international. Um, right. First, before we do that, we're just gonna, okay, kind of, not bad, it's, it's not bad, it's not bad. Let's warm that up over there. <coughs> and we'll put, right, I wonder if we can do this without jacking with anything. Oh man, so wanna get into this. I'm eager, eager. My wife would say, Eric, why aren't you patient? You know, you get better results if you're just patient. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be patient. Okay. Let's 
Oh, dude. Right there, man. Gorgeous. Okay. Ta-da. Okay. Looky there, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Dude, that is so cool. Oh, man. That is fun. There we go, guys. We taped, painted, and untaped two trucks tonight. That is so cool. Oh man, that's wicked. So all of these decals down here on the bottom go on that red truck. So all of those right there go on that one. And all of these blue ones go over here. Holy smokes. I could actually, if I wanted to, do, I could, um, I could decal these up and shoot color or clear coat yet tonight if I wanted to. I'm not. I might put some decals on. I'm not going to do any clear because I just want to make sure this is fully cured paint. You could do it. I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this thing right here. So that should take me about 45 minutes and it should be ready to go. So that's going to be awesome. Woo. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to go back through the comments real quick. Man, that's just fun. <laughs> I love it when it goes well. Because there are times when I'm out here and, and, you know, you think the world is crashing down? All right. Okay, Neil Despain says, that's clean. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, and 164, whoops. Uh, Logan Brooks, thank you for high five. And the official shway. Where can I buy square tubing to stretch a die cast? I'm glad you asked that. Right here, boing. In my store, I've got some 730 seconds um, square to, or brass channel is what this is. Now, you can buy this exact same thing. Well, not this thing. Um, you can go to your hardware store, like I have a True Value hardware store, just a half a mile, three quarter of a mile that away. And you can buy um, 732 square tubing, cut it in half, and you got channel. Um, hardware store's good anywhere on the internet if you just dial in. Okay, now. Okay, okay, okay. okay. If you go to my, now I'm not saying you have to buy from me, but uh, if you do, thank you. If you go to my store, I tell you which Diecast Promotions trucks that 732 square tube's gonna fit. And then, so you can just say, well, I need, I need, I wanna stretch out a, a 379 Peterbilt, DCP 379 Peterbilt. Okay. That kind of information is on that, that particular item. So in the description, you can roll down there and you'll see all the typical jargon. And then you'll say, then you'll see that this, this particular product fits these kinds of diecast promotions trucks. Okay. Now, now that that's over, if you're going to stretch a T880 Kenworth, you're going to do quarter inch channel or quarter inch, just quarter inch channel. Um, if you're doing a DCP C65, you're going to do 3 16 If you're doing a 579, quarter inch channel, and it's super tight. Now, the reason I don't have those particular products, quarter, is because I'm just not carrying that yet. But then when I do, that kind of data will be along with it. That's why I'm keeping me a list. So anytime I stretch a truck I've never done before, I make sure I write down what, I, what product I use to stretch it out. That way... When I do carry the product, I reveal the mystery for you. Ha! All right. So, 732 will work for like uh, 379, 89, 59 Peterbilt. Um, there's a couple of other trucks out there. I forget what they are, but uh, it's also in my store, rockinhfarmtoys.com. Click Products by Rockin H and then Building Materials, and you'll see it there. All right. That was a great question. Uh, but you can buy all that crap. Buy all, no, it's not crap, is it? Faux pas. You can buy 
all that stuff anywhere online with a simple search. Uh, there. Yeah. Or you can buy from me. Buy from me. That's better. Okay. Another hit of tea there. And one more quick look for questions. And that's it. Yay, we're done. Okay. It's been a full hour. Oh my gosh. But it's such a productive hour. Two trucks taped, painted, untaped, and freaking amazing lines. Yeah. Okay. Totally geeking out over here. That's it. Till we meet again. Cheers. Go out and build something awesome. Diecastlab.com. That's my membership site. Join it. Subscribe. That helps me. And it's awesome. And you're going to learn a crap ton. Hello. Do that. That's awesome. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.